World War II for the United States began when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii on December 7, 1941. Their main targets were the powerful battleships of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. In doing so, they used a weapon that would displace the battleship in power and importance, the aircraft carrier. Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, the architect of Japan's navy and strategy, is purported to have mused when the attack was completed that, I fear we have only awakened a sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. Three years and three months later, that sleeping giant now approached the shores of the Japanese homeland in the form of the largest fleet ever assembled. One thousand five hundred aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and other assorted ships. Manned by five hundred and fifty thousand men, and all with the resolve to crush the adversary that had awakened the giant. Japan now braced itself to protect their homeland, its sacred soil, its way of life, using their ancient martial code of Bushido, loyalty, honor, and sacrifice unto death. Their willingness to die now spawned the divine wind, the kamikaze. Japan had been losing irreplaceable men and materiel after years at war, and many of the Japanese kamikaze pilots were hastily trained, indoctrinated to eagerly seek a target and crash their aircraft to complete their mission. Some had as few as three to four hours of actual flight training. The kamikaze was the most dangerous threat to ever face the United States Navy. To protect the men and fleet, they placed eyes and ears in harm's way between the Japanese mainland and the fleet at Okinawa. One such advanced position was radar picket station number 15, northwest of Okinawa. On May 10, 1945, the ships detailed to assume watch at radar picket station number 15 were the Sumner-class destroyer USS Hugh W. Hadley, DD-774, the Fletcher-class destroyer USS Evans, DD-552, three newer specialized gunboats called Landing Craft Support, or LCS-82, LCS-83, and LCS-84. And finally, a landing ship medium rocket, 193. These 900 men on six ships, standing between the formidable Japanese homeland just 300 miles away, and the fleet of their shipmates who were depending upon them for early warning of this terrible threat of men willing to die by crashing their airplanes into those ships. The responsibility was great, but no one foresaw the firestorm about to be unleashed. The Hadley was equipped with a dedicated combat information center, or CIC, which contained the latest radar and communications equipment to coordinate air, land, and sea resources in defense. Men such as Ensign Douglas Aitkins manned the windowless room, directing a battle their eyes never witnessed. The Hadley, Evans, and LSM-193 were each armed with 5-inch 38 caliber guns equipped with the new VT proximity fuses. All six ships bristled with 40 millimeter Bofors pom-pom guns, 20 millimeter Orlikans, and 50 caliber machine guns for anti-aircraft protection. Their collective gunnery could put up a formidable defense if they stayed together. 
On the evening of May 10th, a single Japanese plane approached the ships and was taken under fire by the destroyers and shot down. Throughout that night, enemy aircraft were in the vicinity and the ships stayed on alert at general quarters. At dawn, the tired crews on watch were relieved and went to breakfast. Crewmen, like water tender third class Del Hall, just sat down to chow when the klaxon sounded. Battle stations, battle stations, and the crew reacted immediately. The destroyers went to flank speed and began maneuvering around and away from the LCSs and LSM. The Combat Information Center reported large formations of planes approaching from the north. Raid 1, 36 planes. Raid 2, 50 planes. Raid 3, 20 planes. Raid 4, 20 to 30 planes. Raid 5, 20 planes. 150 planes headed for radar picket station number 15 now. This was the beginning of Kikusui No. 6, a continued effort of combined kamikaze raids to destroy the U.S. fleet. This operation from several air bases on Kyushu included hundreds of planes, but the aircraft headed for radar picket station No. 15 consisted of 80 Army and 70 Navy planes totaling 150 kamikazes. At 0755, the Hadley CIC vectored the combat air patrols CAP pilots, who had arrived on station just after dawn towards the approaching planes. The Marine Corsair pilots cut through the enemy, scattering their formations and picking off individuals. They shot down approximately 40 to 50 kamikazes as they continued southwards towards Okinawa. But now the planes were within sight of the ships at radar picket station number 15, and their 5-inch guns opened fire. The bursts of anti-aircraft fire sent four kamikazes crashing into the sea, which brought the tiny band of ships to the attention of the 100 remaining kamikazes who now sortied to assault them. Kamikazes were setting up their approach from all directions, some circling cautiously, observing their quarry, others banding together with comrades to make group attacks. At 0805, it started. Over the next 100 minutes, the attacks were constant and ongoing. Hadley splashed a dozen enemy planes in the first 20 minutes. The LCSs and LSM gun crews waited until the approaching enemy got within range of their respective guns and opened fire. Gun crews had to remain at high alert, shooting at one target, then swinging around to another that might be getting closer or coming from another direction. The LCS's 40mm and 20mm guns were red hot. The gunners fired and the ammo loaders kept them supplied with fresh rounds. Gunners would target attacking planes coming at any ship in the area providing mutual fire support. The ship's crews not at the guns kept the engines running, the ships maneuvering the radios coordinating actions with no let-up. Every man did his duty. At 0904, the Evans was struck by a bomb at the waterline and began to flood. At 0906, she was hit by a second kamikaze, followed a minute later by a third kamikaze and bomb hit, destroying both her boilers and leaving her dead in the water. She was hit by a fourth kamikaze and was ablaze and disabled. Her guns kept firing while her crew fought the fires. LCSs and LSM-193 had their hands full with their own attackers, but each managed to shoot down several kamikazes. The LCSs had a not-so-kind nickname of pallbearers, but it is also one they have great pride in. LCS-82 radio man John Rooney said that when the Evans was hit, the 82 tied up Chinese gangway to the starboard side, and the LCS-84 tied up along her port side, passing pumps and hoses, fighting the fires on board the Evans, and helping to keep the burning ship afloat. 
They moved and treated the wounded and with their own anti-aircraft guns continued to provide a withering defense against the kamikazes. These pallbearers were instrumental in saving the USS Evans. Meanwhile, Lieutenants Crowley and Keeley, two of the pilots of Marine Corsairs from the Cap, returned to the fight and having expended all of their ammunition, they used their planes to disrupt and distract the diving kamikazes. One such act saved the Evans from another direct kamikaze hit as these Marines forced it to crash into the sea close by the Evans. The USS Hadley was still maneuvered and was separated from the tiny group of ships and thus became the main target of 10 kamikazes at 0920. Hadley gunners destroyed all 10, but she was hit by a bomb aft, followed by a baka bomb. She was then hit by a kamikaze aft and another in the rigging. A bomb blast below her midships ruptured the ship and disabled her engines and broke both of her propeller shafts. With the engines dead, the order was to get topside abandoned ship. The skipper of the Hadley ordered signalmen to run up every flag they could as he said, if this ship is going down, she's going down with all flags flying. Abandoned ship was ordered and most personnel went into the water. The remaining two pallbearers, the LCS-83 and LSM-193, began to pick up Hadley sailors in the water and then moved alongside the crippled destroyer to help fight fires, move the wounded, and set pumps to keep the Hadley afloat. The pallbearers earned the respect and grateful appreciation of every ship and crew they helped. After 100 minutes of the most furious and intense air-sea battles in history, the kamikazes were gone and the ships concentrated on licking their wounds and just remaining afloat. Unfortunately, there were another 50 or so kamikazes that made it through to the fleet, knocking out the carriers Bunker Hill and Sangamon, as well as damaging three other ships at an additional cost of 579 killed and 564 wounded in action. The damaged USS Hadley and Evans were towed back to San Francisco. When the repair yard experts looked at them, they were astonished and commented, Why did you bring them back? They can't be repaired. Both record-breaking destroyers were sold for salvage. The LCSs and LSM from that fateful day were rewarded by being placed back into combat immediately and continuing their outstanding work as anti-aircraft ships and pallbearers that saved many lives and ships. The final toll of the kamikaze attacks on the U.S. fleet at Okinawa was 250 ships sunk or damaged. One out of every seven casualties suffered by the United States Navy in World War II was at Okinawa. The LCSs each shot down three kamikazes and assisted in shooting down others. LCS-82, LCS-83, and LCS-84 and their crews were each awarded the Navy Unit Citation. The LSM-193 shot down three kamikazes and picked up the majority of the Hadley's crew that had gone into the water. She was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. The Evans was badly damaged after being hit by four kamikazes and bombs. But afloat due to the bravery of her crew and the action of the pallbearers LCS-82 and LCS-84. The Evans was credited with destroying 19 kamikazes, a record for Fletcher class destroyers. And she was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. The USS Hadley was also damaged after being hit by three kamikazes and two bombs. Her brave crew was credited with 23 kamikazes down, an unequaled all-time record for any ship in the U.S. Navy. One-third, or 121, of the 336 crewmen of the USS Hadley were awarded the Purple Heart for action on May 11, 1945. The Hadley and her crew was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. 
Two years later, Marine Corps Air Pilots Lieutenants Keeley and Crowley were spot awarded the Navy Cross for their shooting down of four kamikazes each. Their feat was only discovered when the Pentagon was wrapping up paperwork from the war. The 100 minutes of May 11th at Radar Picket Station No. 15 at Okinawa is extraordinary and is only one example of the bravery, fortitude, and heroism of the men of our greatest generation. It is to them, regardless of their rank, service, or duty station, that we owe a debt of gratitude that can never be repaid.